Welcome back to this uh, series of videos on using version control with Git. Okay, so far we have made some changes to the project and we are able to track older versions of the project. In this section of the uh, video series, we are going to be uh, talking about how to explore our history. We already had a very brief look at that by using the git log command. But in this video or in this series of videos in the next sections, we are going to be looking at uh, a little bit uh, different perspective on exploring history. Okay, so um, this section of video is based on uh, the fifth lesson in the series and uh, on using version control with Git. So that is lesson number five and you can follow along at your own leisure. In order to prevent the videos from becoming too long uh, and also to absorb the content appropriately, uh, perhaps it is better to split the video into smaller chunks. And that is what um, I will be aiming to do here. Okay, let's get hands on. Um, okay, so I am going to have a look at the working directory and it says uh, I have one file marsh.txt let me cat marsh.txt okay and there are three lines of text in that file okay now the topic of this video is about exploring history and in particular let's talk about the concept known as head h-e-a-d this refers to the most recent commit in the project's git repository not in the working directory not in the staging area but in the head of the repository or in the most recent commit at the repository that is called head and now you can refer to the commits by using this idea of head okay so let's see how various git commands can use head as an argument to them okay so i'm going to first uh, make some more changes just like in a real world project and see how we can uh, use this uh, idea of head okay so let's say i am now making a change which is not really well thought of now this is quite common isn't it so you're working on a source code on a big project with c plus plus code the code base is large and um, maybe you want to try out something and later you realize it doesn't work as you expect um, the code doesn't work as you expected or if you're writing a latex project you write uh, plain text in your source code in your text file editor your text editor and then you realize that one or two lines uh, of text you don't want them or this is not the most appropriate uh, description of your project maybe so this can happen all the time okay but let's say i am now simulating such an ill-considered change by the literal sentence called an ill-considered change now let's see what uh, that means in terms of exploring history by the using this concept called head i'm going to save this file first of all and i'm ex exiting out of it now if i cat marsh.txt says that okay there are this is the working directory that's the file in the working directory and you see that there is a fourth line called an ill considered change that's present okay now i'm going to look at git diff to see the difference between the repository the most recent change or most recent commit in the repository compared with the working directory the same file in the working directory okay and i'm going to show a slightly different perspective on head on diff okay by using the head status first of all i clear the screen by using the head identifier okay so let's see uh, i'm going to how can i get the diffs okay so git diff by default would compare the top of the repository the most recent change in the repository to my working directory in my hard disk okay so the to the my file system to the file in the file system okay we all know this we already did this and you see that an ill considered change happens as a add addition okay now git diff is just a short form of saying git diff head to mars.txt basically git diff can take two additional arguments and head here points to the top of the repository that is the most recent change in the repository and here mars.txt represents the file in the file system so git diff 
by default is the shorthand notation for exactly this command and therefore if you run this command you get exactly the same answer or the same output okay so that is head uh, that is the idea of head head just refers to the top of the repository or the most recent commit in the repository is called the head is referred to by head now you can use head as a relative pointer so basically you can refer to older commits by going back from backwards from head okay for example if you have to compare the last but one commit the penultimate commit with the uh, current version in our file system you could just use git diff head minus one and in the minus is special here use the tilde symbol so head minus one refers to the previous commit just the, the penultimate one in the repository so let's say we want to compare that with the master text and now to just to clarify things i'm going to clear the screen with control l okay and it says ah now two lines have been added because the last commit uh, had added this one and the file system has this but the last commit had added that and the commit before that did not have that so the mummy's appreciation of lack of humidity if you look at the log you see that the um, effect of mass climate for mummy was added there right but uh, now effect of mass moons on wolfman was the one that was already present so git diff head minus one to the working directory will say that these two things are now um, new you could uh, keep doing this forever as in you can keep going using the relative uh, history uh, and that is one way to explore file let's for example i've just cleared the screen let's look the git difference between head minus two and the minus character is spe special it's not the minus literal minus key on the keyboard but rather it's the tilde key okay so I do I use git diff head minus two to mass dot text. Now it says that oh three lines have been added. Okay, so that is it compares the version in the repository that is two commits behind head. Okay, to the file in the file system, and it says that the file in the file system has these three lines more than the the two commits behind the, the than the file with two commits behind in the repository okay so um, how do you verify this is correct you can actually use another command called git show to show any specific version of the file in the history so this is uh, another perspective on exploring history is to use the git show command this is the first time we are learning this command so let's see what git show does git show is to show all aspects of changes of that particular commit in this particular case i want to see git show git show head minus two so i want to see exactly what went into that commit and you have to also tell what, which file you're interested in looking at so i'm interested in looking at one file called mass.txt okay so if i do a git show it gives me everything about that commit it gives me the commit sha the author the date of the commit and it also tells me that okay that was my starting point in fact and i had just one line and those that one line was added in that particular commit and there was nothing else dev null is computer speak or unix speak for nothing or emptiness so before the beginning of time or before the beginning of this git repository's life um, there was nothing in that file and mass.txt was the very first thing that was added to the um projects repository for the project in the git repository and we added it by just uh, having this one line of text so git show gives you everything about that commit it gives you the complete explanation of um, what happened during that okay? so that is the git show command now you could use something like if you had a very long project right i'm going to clear the screen using control l if you had a very long project you could potentially use this to go way back let's say you were 110 commits uh, you want to see something that happened 110 commits before now git show head minus 110 master text will give you if you had 110 plus commits if you have more than 110 commits this would work but in this case uh, we only have like three or four commits so 
this currently does not make sense um, but you could use this you could use head and then go back relative from head this is called like a relative referencing now clearly it's a bit inconvenient to do this for one two or three uh, then this is okay this way of relative referencing is okay but I suggest that if you have more than uh, such a uh, more than like four or five then it may be better to look them from an absolute commit point of view uh, for that you can use the commit SHA for the relative um, exploration of commit history for using a relative pointer location you can use the head pointer and for absolute referencing of commits you just simply use the commit SHA okay so how can one do that let's look at the git log okay so git log gives you a log uh, of all the commits so there have been three commits done so i can just copy this entire commit sha okay and then git diff okay let's say we want to look at the difference between that commit that commit is also the head remember and helpfully there is this head pointer reminding us that this is in fact the head I can either use that or in fact I can just pass in the absolute reference and shift insert is the value uh, for pasting and in fact that gets overwritten by anything else um, so if I copy this one one more time the 40 character commit SHA and if I paste that using shift insert I don't know why that's not working let's see I use control shift insert okay that's not working in my computer for some reason but it should work um let's try one more time we right click and paste okay there's some problem um in my copying okay control c is not correct excuse me for this it's just the console acting up Aha, uh -huh. this clearly some problem here. Um, get diff. Okay, finally I got it. I don't know what was happening there, but it shouldn't be a problem on your machine. Excuse me for that. I apologize for this um, last set of actions but you should be able to just copy that commit which corresponds to head so either you can use head or you can use that commit sha which is a 40 character alphanumeric string and then compare that to master.text okay and there you see and you'll consider change um, is currently present in our working directory that's the file in the working directory here and that's the file at the top of the repository so you can refer to commits by absolute commits and this might be helpful by absolute commit sha and this might be helpful for looking at commits which have happened far back in history okay now you don't have to um, type this 40 character string because it's a little bit inconvenient isn't it uh, in fact you could just copy the first uh, few characters i'd say four or five or even let's say up to seven characters is more than sufficient to uniquely determined oh and i have to remind you about this the commit shaft that you see on my computer will be different from that you see on your computer if you're following along um, it's just because this commit shafts are made um, uniquely to each machine so each project will have a different commit shaft even for the same content you may have a different commit shaft. it depends on a various other factors here your machine you're on your timestamp it's made up of a lot of things so long story short the commit shot that i'm showing on my screen will be different to what you see on your screen so you have to use your um alphanumeric characters that you see on your screen as part of your git log okay so please uh, do that i'm going to clear the screen just to uh, bring up some space um, and to see the diff clearly so you don't have to use the 40 character string you can use the first six or seven characters and that should still be able to uniquely identify the project you have a large number of objects a few hundreds and or a few thousands of objects on your uh, project uh, and if you make um, tens of thousands of commits then maybe you will run into some conflicts um, if you use only the first six or seven characters and then you may have to use the 
10 or 11 characters or, or more depending on the size of your project but for small projects for a quick paper for a, an article a manuscript in latex or for a small research project as part of a phd um, i think four or five characters is good enough i have never run into conflicts myself okay so you can use that okay uh, so get diff with a relative with an absolute sha will work so let's see how this can uh, further be expanded upon so I said that you can use relative commits. So for example, to refer to the very first commit, uh, I can uh, copy that entire character string and use the git diff command with that. Or I can use git diff head tilde three, that's the relative way of referencing. But if you want to refer to the start of a project, which is very long, then it is helpful to, rather than scrolling back entirely through the git history and um, counting how many commits behind your start of the project was it's just um, good to use the absolute sha here in my case i can simply use f236 1372 or something the first few characters is sufficient uh, and then say what do i have to compare that commit to and it comes back with the same answer okay right so and that's basically the same as saying git div head minus three again note that the minus is actually tilde in git so you uh, let's see head minus three git diff head minus two. Oh, in fact there are only three commits so far so head minus two uh, head minus three doesn't exist right so that is why it says ambiguous argument head minus three unknown revision or path not in the working tree it's because we have only three commits so far and head minus three will take will try to attempt to access the fourth commit uh, um, in the order uh, in the reverse chronological order and therefore that doesn't exist so only head minus two exists right so and then if you look at the git diff and that will be essentially the same as saying uh, the absolute uh, sha so this is yet another way of exploring the git history all right okay so let's say that is the ill-considered change that we have got right now and uh, we have now explored how to use the relative commit um, by relative relative way of looking at commits by using the head pointer and we also looked at how to look at absolute way of looking at commits by using the commit sha then okay so let's just say uh, i want to um, uh, let's say i want to um, go back in history okay now we got an ill considered change uh, and i want to say um, I want to get rid of the seal considered change okay so i come uh, here to the last file and i delete that um, let's see um where is my cursor so i start deleting with the backspace character but i was impatient and let's say i deleted the whole thing the whole file essentially um and then I realized all this doesn't make sense. Okay, or uh, I want to um, now start from fresh. Let's say I was not thinking straight and I said something like, we need to manufacture our own oxygen. Something completely different to what we have been doing so far. Okay. And then I decided, okay, I'll write out this file. I was thinking, I uh, was not thinking straight. Um, I just decided to replace everything in the marsh.txt file. So far, all the changes we built so far, uh, all the lines have now gone, right? So now let's say I want, I got trigger happy and now I say git status modified marsh.txt and oh, then I realized, oh, maybe I should retain everything so far and um, this one, I want to, this is not what we want. I realized that I got two trigger happy and I just jumped the gun and I started talking about manufacturing oxygen but in the process I overwrote everything that we had so mass.txt now contain only contains only this line and everything else is gone from the from that file in the file system okay so despite it being gone from the file system it is still present in the git history so that is why it is super powerful to use git right you may have accidentally deleted something you may be trying some ideas in your c plus plus project or your fortran code and something did not work or you made some change that wasn't correct 
and you want to go back that is the power of get you can actually go back so how do we go back it says that um, uh, march.txt has been modified and no changes currently to commit git add to commit so we will not add it let's say we realize that we made this mistake right now and we want to stop any further damage and we want to restore the status uh, uh, core from the repository so how do you do that that's where this command comes out comes up git checkout this is a very very powerful command what it does is to restore the version from the repository back into the working directory so let me repeat that again this is the first time we are learning the git checkout command so git checkout takes the required version from the repository and replaces the copy in the working directory with it. okay so it blows away anything in the working directory with the checked out value or checked out file from the repository in this particular case we want to check out the head of the repository and we want to and from the head we want to check out mass.txt so essentially what we are saying is hey replace mass.txt in my file system with the corresponding file from the top of my repository from the latest commit in my repository if I do that, that's it. So now if I cat mass.txt, magically all the changes we had so far are back. Basically all the contents have been restored. And that is the power of Git. You still have only one file. You don't have gazillion versions of the file. So if you look at the planets directory, you still have just one file which contains everything. Okay. Right. So that is the power of Git. So even though you made some accidental change, you can use the checkout command to check it out. Okay. So git checkout is very powerful. Now you can check out any arbitrary version. You don't necessarily have to check out the head. You can check out, for example, you can go all the way back to the beginning of the project. So how do you do that? I'm going to clear my screen with the control L command. And um, I'm going to ask for my git log. and this looks like that is the first commit here. If I want to um, replace the file in my file system with the very first command of commit, I decide one day that, okay, all the thing, things that I worked on are not correct. And I want to start from scratch again with the first commit. I can do that. I can do git checkout. Either I can use a relative reference, head minus two will do it in this case, or I can use an absolute reference. If you want to go really far back in history, using relative reference might be hard. Okay, so I can just use an absolute reference and then do the file that I am interested to check out. In this particular case, it's mass.txt. Okay, right. And now if you cat the contents of mass.txt, you should say, aha, that's the very first thing that I started my project with. That was my very first commit. And in fact, if you look at the file system right now, let's look at the planets uh, directory and the file. It just has that one line. So without cluttering up your file system, all the changes are being cracked right now. And then um, you can see that, okay, there has been these changes that has been made, um, but um, it still appears as a change uh, to Git, right? because the top of the repository contains something different from the first uh, from the file system right so if you look at git diff it actually uh, hold on um, so let's uh, look at mars.txt okay and git check oh git checkout essentially takes the repository back to the um, get back to the version we asked for now git status should tell exactly what has been happened so git status says that mars.txt has actually been modified and is now in this status okay and therefore uh, but let's say uh, we want to go back into the version in the head we simply check out head again so git check out head mars.txt Okay, and now that should restore 
everything that we have been working on. So you can go backwards and forwards in history. So git checkout head minus one marsh.txt. Okay, that should basically have only two lines. Now you want to get rid of those changes. Git checkout head marsh.txt. And you're back to the status with your last commit. That, that's your latest commit and your file system now matches the latest commit. So that is absolutely possible, right? So uh, let's just uh, say we forgot to use this file marsh.txt while checking out. Let me simulate this. This is a very common scenario, okay? So git checkout head minus one. And let's say you forgot to add marsh.txt here. Okay, so I'm going to simulate that environment. If you do this, something, um, it looks like something wrong has happened. Okay, so it looks, it goes into something called as a detached head state. Now, if this happens, don't do any further changes. Okay, it is just like a its way of warning you that something wrong has happened. And if you want a more visual explanation, I strongly suggest that you explore the lesson um, there are some graphical illustration of what exactly happens um, when the head gets detached. Okay, so that is um, the scenario that I'm currently demonstrating. And for a bit more detailed explanation of an internal working principle, then this is how um, you would um, you you would refer to the um, you would re refer to the um, lesson in software carpentry lesson so how can we rectify this situation you can simply go to you can simply say git checkout master and that should essentially bring back the head to the correct location okay so now if i do git log and let me do the dash dash one line option we see that everything is fine head now points to the master branch you still um, have everything correctly done here so this is how you will use uh, the relative references the, the concept of head pointer is quite important the concept of absolute references using the commit sha that is quite important and this is how you would work on your project in a real in a real life project so to summarize git diff essentially is a short form of git diff head and then your current file in the working directory so git diff is just a short form of that you can always use git checkout to check out any older versions from your project's history from the repository. So by passing git checkout, let's say head minus 10, if you have more than 10 commits, if you have more than 10 commits, then you can use git checkout head minus 10. And in particular, do not forget to check out which file you're interested in. Okay, so that is, so checkout and head. These are the two important things which we realize and we also uh, have to keep in mind the absolute referencing possibilities. So um, I think I shall leave you uh, with that. This has been already a long video, uh, but feel free to go through these exercises here. Um, these orange colored um, blocks are exercises and I strongly suggest that you try out the exercises at the bottom of this lesson. And, and try to understand a little bit more about the internal workings of um, how the checkout process works and how, um, how to recover older versions, how to use the head pointer and all these ideas will be um, nicely exercised by following these um, questions. So I will then see you in the next video.